Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about Urban Defense Tactics, which is a premium commander uh, with the following features. Uh, zero command points, you can get a forward HQ, although you still need 60 fuel for it, so you can't get it that early. But uh, it's basically the uh, forward headquarters that the Panzer Elite could use in Company of Heroes 1. You get healing, uh, a defensive bonus, and you can reinforce. I don't believe that it can build any units itself. You get this light AT gun, which is uh, also in the single player, I believe, so if you uh, really want to use it in multiplayer, then you can get it this way. It's just 200 manpower. It's not bad. You get uh, armored vehicle detection, which you've probably seen in other commanders. You get booby traps, which is another thing that the Panzer Elite could do in uh, CH1. But this version of the booby trap doesn't require any infantry to plant. You just click the ability and plant it, and it costs 100 munitions. And, of course, incendiary artillery barrage, which we're all familiar with, brings uh, incendiary rounds down to burn infantry. So, this game... I started out with a support Campania. I like to make one or two squads of conscripts and then support them with an MG. And it looks like my opponent went with a strong grenadier start going for the north half of the map. And at this point in the game I'm just spreading out and uh, taking territory, waiting for that 60 fuel to come in so that I can make my forward headquarters when the uh, time is right. This now belongs to us. I'm spreading myself pretty thin across the map, worrying more about territory and less about winning the first engagement, although I am setting up an MG here, hoping that maybe I'll get lucky and the enemy will walk into it. I saw this glass shatter, so I know he's got something in this building, so I decided to point over here towards the middle. Little do I know, there's a Another squad there on my flank. So I turn to face it. And of course he leaves the building. He executes this first engagement really well. I pretty much stand no chance. So I have to retreat. I bring these pioneers down, or engineers down to support, but there's not really much they can do. Even in the earliest parts of the game there not very good in any combat situation. Since I see him making use of these buildings, I decided to go with some early Molotovs. You really can't go wrong with Molotovs if you're using conscripts. They're a great purchase. Move up into cover, and I see him going for this building, so I Molotov the front door. Rather than Molotoving a building, you should always Molotov the front door, hoping that he will eject the building right there in that spot, and you might get lucky and kill a few. I didn't, but it's still a good uh, good thing to do. So I have to uh, come back to base and recuperate a little bit. I bring my uh, second MG in, get this one back up to full health, and then I make for the middle. I see this force down here capping, so I assume that he's probably moved some of his forces down to this south area. So I decide to go down there and counter his push. But it looks like he's actually retreating to uh, get his units back up to strength. Okay, that's the last one. Which I don't realize. It looks like he's also got a unit just sitting idle up here in the north. I could probably be taking my fuel if he really wanted to. I don't even bother putting my MGs in this house. Uh, putting the Soviet MG in the house for some reason is just useless. It doesn't seem to ever fire, even when units are standing perfectly still outside of it. And they still take a lot of damage, so really the house provides almost no benefit for the Soviet MG. And why that is, I'm not really sure, but just don't even don't even bother putting your MG in a house as the Soviets. It can be worthwhile as the Axis. Up here I find these grenadiers with my uh, conscripts, and I throw a Molotov 
This time I get lucky, two of them burn to death immediately. And uh, I'm able to finish off the last guy. Giving me free reign in the north. My, uh, my instincts tell me he's probably going to go for a scout car. So I bring in this light AT gun as a preemptive counter against that. And now that I have a pretty good foothold in the middle, I'm thinking about setting up this forward HQ. Though I'm not sure exactly which building I want to use yet. People from Company of Heroes 1 probably know that setting up a forward HQ in this church is a very common strategy on Simwa, but it can often end in tears if you get artilleried to death. And setting up a forward HQ here can help put the nail in the coffin, but it's very aggressive. It's a very hard spot to hold. Of course, none of those things may hold true in CH2, with the forward HQ being such an unusual thing to see now. Got an MG covering this area. He won't be able to cross that easily. These guys retreat from the, my Molotov, giving me more time to capture the rest of the map and set myself up. I've got my MG here, my light AT guns, capping this back point. It's time to move up. I give myself a forward defensive position right here so that the conscripts can cap safely. I put this MG in the building because you need to occupy a building in order to turn it into a, uh, a forward HQ. He tries to get past my MG with a grenade, but it's not quite enough. They end up getting chased up. Meanwhile, those pioneers aren't able to punch much of a hole. So I'm right, he did indeed go for a scout car. And it looks like he also went with a sniper. Probably to pick off my MGs. Although I honestly think a sniper is a bad purchase in almost any situation, because a six-man squad is a lot to snipe. Engineers, ready for assignment. Scout car emerges from the fog of war, and I know that this MG is pretty much already dead, so I don't even bother retreating it. I just try and face it toward the scout car and do what damage I can, but it looks like he's blocking me anyway, so... So much for those guys. Since I know he's assaulting in the south, I move my AT guns up to take out his base defense. Although I kind of inadvertently blocked myself with this, this thing, and my AT gun's having trouble pathing past it. Well, that's okay, my actual AT gun is doing fine. I move my stuff up to try and uh, take out some base building. But his assault in the south is going to take a lot of my territory, so I'm trying to put as much pressure up here as I can. Watch out! The There's the sniper. Taking fire! Fresh conscripts have arrived. And here comes the scout car. He gets a little too close, I think, to my AT gun here. Yeah, it's just barely in range. I don't think he even realizes. And boom. Takes a nasty, nasty hit. He's busy microwing a scout car. He lets my concerts get a little too close to that sniper, and he shouldn't have retreated, but I'm not sure what he should have done. Probably just kept kiting me. When he retreated, he walked right back into the arc of my MG, and that's pretty much it for him. I keep my light AT gun pointed south so I can deal with the uh, scout car if it re-emerges. And at some point, I believe I start firing at this base building with my AT gun. There it goes. But it looks like he's making an assault coming up from the south still. All that's left to defend my forward HQ at this point is a squad of flame pioneers. I'm bringing down some conscripts to support and I have a new squad coming. Meanwhile, he's grenaded my MG over here, so it's dead, and these conscripts are not going to win this fight. Oh, I got a lucky snipe with the AT gun, though. Look at that. 
But I'm busy microing this mess over here. He's got, he's stolen my MG that the scout car killed. So these guys are suppressed, but they managed to get in the house. I bring these guys up. Throw a Molotov to try and kill his MG. And at this point, I realize that my AT guns need to make a hasty retreat. Oh, my guys get uh, grenaded. I don't even notice this, I don't think. Yeah, they all die. But I do get my AT guns out of his base safely. And I'm able to get back to this forward, age, forward position of mine and reinforce, which, if I didn't have this, there's no way these AT guns would be able to stand up to anything without any support, really. And I certainly wouldn't be able to reliably beat Grenadiers with just an unvetted squad of flame pyos. And uh, this, this green cover barrier I built is turning out to be a pretty good investment. And this is where he kind of makes his <laughs> makes a fatal mistake. He thinks maybe he can just overrun me by charging, but I do have 60 munitions stored up, and I've got the AT gun pointed right at the bridge, and he just walks right through that devastating barrage. Everything is dead. And at this point, I'm in a pretty good position. It would take uh, take a pretty nasty force to get past me. I've got a mine protecting my AT gun's flank. He'd have to go through a double vet AT gun and a single vet light AT gun with any vehicle that wants to cross. It could flank me from the south, but it'd take a lot of time. And uh, he's not doing that great for resources. He's only got. 100 fuel at this point, and my T-70 rolls on the field, and he has absolutely no munitions, he can't even Faust me. So my T-70 is free to just wreak havoc on everything he has. And that's pretty much uh, all there is to it. The important thing here is that once you have this forward position, you can't just sit here. It's really important that you push into their base and just apply as much pressure as possible. You'd be surprised how much damage your AT guns will do to their base buildings, and you can take them out if you can just just make sure that they keep firing, uh, keep them facing the right direction. I had to back off, but I, I'm pretty sure I only fired like two or three shots at this thing. And look at that, it's already at almost a half health. So if you can just get some conscripts up there to give visibility, they're gonna die, but if you can stall by throwing Molotovs, make them maneuver around, if you can help out with an MG or something, and just keep shooting at their base buildings with the AT gun, you can get it down, and that'll really, really cripple their forces. Especially if uh, they made the critical mistake of building their higher tier buildings closer to the entrance, for whatever reason. Some particularly careful people might put their buildings way back here in the back, and if they do, that's going to make this really difficult. But it does also mean that their units will be exposed when they retreat, and you may be able to kill a lot of their retreating units that way. And if you get low, rather than waiting till you're down to one or two guys and then hitting retreat, just wait till you're down to like three or four guys. You might want to run back here, reinforce. You'll even heal. You can reinforce and get full health and everything, and then you can just walk right back in. So it takes a lot of micro, and you got to pay a lot of attention, and of course, a good flank from the south can really slow you down, but it doesn't have to be the end of the world, and uh, y you can execute and make and bring together a victory out of that. So yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't even use any of these other features, but really the main thing is this forward HQ. It's the only commander I know of that uh, actually uses this. So thanks for watching.